Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. On tap, we've got what should be a fairly intriguing matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York Giants. With that, let's get up to MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. Standing by for the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And thank you, Coach. We are across the Hudson from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This crowd a few minutes ago stirred into action at the side of their men in blue emerging from the MetLife tunnels. We're set to go as the Giants get ready to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Here's Corey Graham at a return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. Leading the charge is the UCF product who hails from right there in the Orlando area in Altamont Springs, Blake Bortles. And you can see why he was the number three pick when he came out in the NFL draft. 6'5", sturdy guy, strong arm, led his UCF team to a big bowl victory over Baylor and runs the ball way better than he's ever given credit for. for Jacksonville. And Leonard Fournette commands a lot of attention, not just because he was the first 1,000-yard running back for Jacksonville since Boris Jones drew in 2011. It's because of his ability to hit the hole fast, to knock people over when he's carrying the football, and to run away from people when he gets to the open field. He actually has changed the identity of the Jacksonville offense. I'm looking forward to watching him for years to come. On the ground, this is T.J. Yeldon. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Defensively, here's how they will line up for the New York Giants. And the Giants, Charles, are keeping an eye on Olivier Vernon. He was carted off the field during practice August 26. Not what you want to see this late in preseason, and he's a big part of the Giants' pass rush. Sounds like he escaped serious injury, though, partner, because the Giants are listing him as day-to-day, -day, and they're hopeful of having him back for their season opener. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Bortles. And incomplete. The contact made the ball run free and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And the punt team on now as this one set away. Fielded at the 20. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And it'll be giant football first and 10. Eli Manning makes his way out there, getting ready to command the Giants' offense. Charles didn't play in week two of the preseason, but he got some good action last week, week three. Yeah, how about the big game versus the Jets, right? Right in the same stadium that they both share. And Eli was 17 of 23, 188 yards, and looked pretty sharp. And Giants fans so happy about that, as is the organization. Remember, they had an opportunity with the second pick in the draft to draft a quarterback, their future. And it could have been the guy he played against in this ball game, Sam Darnold, now with the Jets. Manning and the Giants come up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. 
They go play action here on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Cody Latimer, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now the rookie first rounder from Penn State, Saquon Barkley. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And we take you through the starting defense for Jacksonville. I'm putting the spotlight on Jalen Ramsey, who was an all-pro for the first time in 2017 at cornerback. But I remember him coming out of Florida State, and people couldn't decide, was he a safety? Was he a corner? Do you use him at both spots? His ability to diagnose plays, his ability to control receivers at the line of scrimmage at his size and then run with them downfield, I think he's going to be a fixture in the Pro Bowl for years to come. Throwing his Manning on third down. And the third down pass falls incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. <laughs> Fights him off. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jags offense coming onto the field, and boy, for a second straight season, a number one wide receiver goes down early in the schedule. Last year was Allen Robinson, who was lost in week one. This year, Marquise Lee, who didn't even make it to week one, goes down with the ACL week three of the preseason. And remember now, Allen Robinson's in Chicago. And remember Allen Hearns, who also had a great impact on that team for a while. He's in Dallas. So it puts a lot of pressure on guys like Keelan Cole, Dante Moncrief, D.D. Westbrook. But the guy I want you to keep an eye on, DJ Chark, out of LSU. I think he'll be their big play threat. Now a play fake here on first down. Flushed out right. Room to run past midfield. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. On that play, as you saw the route start to develop downfield, I got the sense that maybe the run would set up for him, and he took full advantage of it and got a big gain on a busted play. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now, first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. 23 yards on the play. The Jags with their first opportunity in the red zone. It's first and 10 at the 14. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. 
That time, the right guard sending him backwards. Down. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold him. on the give to Fournette. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. Well, a good productive run there on first down. He winds up getting eight. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. Here we go. Second down, here's Bowles. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. One-handed, love the effort. Not much production on that play, though, huh? Not a whole lot of yardage. You get that grab, you probably want a first down. And he'll be the one in the film session if he's saying, hey, run that one back, coach. Yeah. Run that one back. One more time. Let's see that Two again. more time. And they won't. Eight more time. They won't. Didn't get much out of it. completion actually lost a yard so now they'll need to convert on third down hey, 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 hey. Set, throwing his Bortles on third down and he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack tried to get away but could not Kareem Martin able to get outside the numbers and drop him for a loss of a yard that is a sight, a sack, the Giant fans hoping to see more of this year. Well, we know they put a big emphasis on it in the offseason, and it paid off in a big way early in this game, getting to the quarterback. The Giants know they have to get their pass rush pumped up. Josh Lambeau now for the Jaguar field goal from the right hash. This from 33. And Lambeau will put this one through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point's not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. to the main field goal, back out, Lambeau to kick this one off. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Giants offense getting ready to take over again, and they now have the highest-paid NFL receiver on their roster. I don't know if you know him. His name's Odell Beckham Jr. And on the 27th, he signed a five-year extension for how much money? $95 million, I believe, 95. with $65 million of it guaranteed. That's good. Big congrats to him and big congrats to the organization. Not so much that they gave him the money, but now it no longer looms. It's no longer lingering. No more questions about it going into the regular season. He's there. He's going to be a giant, one of the best playmakers in the league. And now they get his full attention on the football field. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. On 
second down. Here's Manning. Over the middle. He's got his tight end, Ingram. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now. Yeah, yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with the defense will give him. down carry for Barkley and he'll push this forward only to about the 42 yard line Telvin Smith that time there to make the play they tried a quick hitter inside but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through didn't happen on that play They'll go to Barkley again. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. To throw on third down. Manning. And Ingram holds it in. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 34. A first carry for the Clemson man, Wayne Goldman. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. They stay on the ground. This time it's Stewart. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The Giants on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and 11. Working from the gun, Manning. He'll complete this to Ingram, his tight end. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Aldrich Rosas now to try the Giants' field goal. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Rosas puts this one through. And that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. 
So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive. But they stiffened when they got close to the goal line. Made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. So a tie ball game here as the kicks away. To return it is Corey Grant. <laughs> and he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Bortles leads the Jags up first and ten at their own 27. Now a play fake. Bortles. And a reception made by Dante Moncrief. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 23 yards on the play. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. On first down, Portals. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there, 26 yards. First down carry. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Fake the handoff. Now Bortles. And to the tight end here, Safarian Jenkins. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Give him six there, but now it's third. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. Three all the score. Back to MetLife Stadium in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. to throw. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. 
And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. situation because the silver lining it took a sack on first and goal but that close to the goal line that still definitely hurts it's second and goal but now all the way back at the 14. Play action. It's Bortles. And he's going to go down again. Olivier Vardum in there to get him. And this pass rush strong now. That sacks on back-to-back -back plays. Second goal. Last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Sack third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And this is caught at the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A big play, but still not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs. They can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Lambo will put this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. To the made field goal back out Lambo to kick this one off. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. And after the field goal last time, let's we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Manning and the Giants come up now first and 10 at the 31-yard line. On first and 10, here's Manning throwing middle, but it's 
it's incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard, and it's second down. Well, you know, Charles, just thinking back, it was around this time a year ago, Hurricane Harvey was devastating the Houston area and other areas there in Southeast Texas. One year later, though, J.J. Watt's foundation announced it had raised and given $41.6 million in the last calendar year. That's phenomenal. And he was the NFL Man of the Year last season, and rightly so for what he did. And if I'm not incorrect, his goal when he started this to help all the people was $200,000. 41.6 million minus 200,000. That, that's a pretty good margin there. That's a heck of a margin. Congratulations to J.J. Watt, his foundation, and to everyone who contributed to help out the people in Houston. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And you remember pre-draft, there was a lot of speculation the Giants should look for their future quarterback at number two with a great possibility. Remember, Sam Darnold from USC was still on the board, but they passed on him to take this runner, Saquon Barkley. And this is exactly why. They think he can extend the life of Eli Manning's career and give them 1,000-yard seasons year after year. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. The Giants on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. It's caught. Shepard. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Manning now on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Hey, hey, on second hey, hey. down, here's Barkley. <laughs> And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Throwing his man is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first. Now this from 43. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. 
And that will tie things up at 6-6. Six, six. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. Here comes Grant on the return. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 23. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. On play action, now Bortles. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Portals to throw on second down. Completes it to Moncrief, left side. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 17. From the gun, it's Bortles. And a giant rush gets home as down he goes. Olivier Vernon in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And the Jaguars send out their punter as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, somehow the ball finds his way back to him. A tone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Good starting field position for the New York Giants here as they come up first and ten. They'll start out on the ground and Saquon Barkley. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. The former All-Pro Marcel Darius brings him down. 
What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Again, it's Barkley. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Malik Jackson there to make the stop. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The Giants on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Now Manning. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. And here is Blake Bortles as we focus in on him for our player spotlight. He's playing pretty well. I don't think it's necessarily him changing up something he's doing, but that old line, they've got to protect him better. They do. They've got to make sure that they give him more than enough time in order to find targets downfield. And sometimes what happens when these things are going on is that the, the field general will step up and say, hey, that's on me, guys. I didn't get rid of it fast enough. Anything to try and relax them a little bit and take some pressure off because they do know that they are trying. Yeah, well, we've seen the four sacks so far in this contest. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. They'll look to set up his blockers. The offense takes the field, and we turn our attention to Saquon Barkley. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but... I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series. Sort of surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. They begin with a run by Barkley. Get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And that's the big fellas at low right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock.
They keep it with Barkley on first down. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. spot when he gets his drop back completed but when you have that type of height he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw throwing on first down is Manning now they go screen it's complete and he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Manning to throw on second down. Throw that side complete to Ingram. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Manning now hitting on two-thirds of his passes. Ten for 15 so far. First and ten. On first down, Manning. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Manning will try again on second down. This will be caught inside the ten. And they do get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. They'll come out in the pistol. Again, it's Manning. And he's got it. Touchdown, Giants. Roger Lewis from three yards out. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to 
hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. Rosas good with the extra point, and that makes this a nine-point game. So that drive in total eight plays, and it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Rosas now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. Second half ready to get rolling. The Giants with a lead, and they are set to receive this kick. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt, <laughs> show them one thing, get them with something else. Manning. And that's incomplete. A strong safety, Barry Church, all over that one and knocked it away. As we inch closer to the regular season, I'm just peering down at some of the preseason records. Right now, Ravens 4-0, Bengals, Panthers, Cardinals, all 3-0. I guess my question is, what stock do you put in these preseason records? Well, the easy answer is nothing because <laughs> the preseason doesn't really matter. 
but some organizations do put more stock in it than others. Some of them want to win every preseason game. Others don't worry about that at all. Intel has told me that only one team has won the Super Bowl after going 0-4 in the preseason, and that was in a strike year, I believe, when Washington did it. So for the most part, you just don't want to go winless in the preseason. But remember this, the Browns and the Lions both went 4-0 preseasons, then they went 0-16 in the regular season. Speaking of winless teams, Eagles and Falcons both winless right now could be Super Bowl contenders. I still think that they're going to be, whether they go winless or not. The Giants on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Manning. And that is incomplete. Well, sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for New York. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. It'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. That, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> now Bortles. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. But with the incompletion there, gives us time to hit on the retirement. Charles of Eric Decker, of course, played for the Broncos, Jets, and Titans, was with the Patriots this preseason, but now he's going to step aside. I think he had a fantastic career because look at it this way. Getting 1,000 yards in one season for a receiver, that's a career for most people. He did it three times. Best year in Denver in 2013. 87 catches, almost 1,300 yards and 11 touchdowns. Congratulations on a wonderful career, Eric Decker. Holding offense. Well, your QB's been sacked four Still times in the down. game already, and they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Set. Green 80. After the penalty, it's 4 now. And he takes this across the 15 to the 17. Give him four yards there, but still in a big hole. Third and long. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and 16. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. And he'll be taken down just shy of the 40. Holding offense. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books. But now they have to make that up again, don't they? And this third down looking very tough after the holding penalty. Third and long. Set. Green 80. Green 80. On third and long, it's Bortles. This is Yeldon on the dump off. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Holding offense. 
So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. And the Jaguars send out their punter, standing right on his own five-yard line. will take over with a new set of downs. The New York set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Manning and the Giants come up now first and 10 right at the 30. Looking to get the ground game going with Stewart. And he takes this from the 30 to the 34. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Pitch goes to Barkley, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. You got four. You got four. That's it. Two, eight, eight. Two, eight, and the blitz does come. Open man right side is Ingram. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Forty six on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Yeldon. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now, the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Fournette. Space to maneuver at the 40. And he gets it across the 50 and down to the 48. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but 
There are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Set, 380. A first down carry now for Yeldon. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. They'll run it again with Yeldon. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. So he runs it for one yard, then no gain. I don't know that you go back to that well here on third down. Yeah, I don't know that you do as well, but if you want to get the ball to him, if you want him to have it, maybe you get him into space and throw it to him. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And the Jaguars send out their punter. He's been terrific so far. set to take the field that got the lead last time had to punt it though what's the key to this drive i think it's leverage ah, the leverage. big guys up front you know the motivational speech on the sideline is guys give us an opportunity protect the passer create space for our runners and let's go ahead and get these guys low man wins let's go do it on this drive <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive Manning and the Giants come up now first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to the air on second down. It's Manning. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. The Giants on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and ten. Working from the gun, Manning. And that's incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It's fielded at the 45. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. Now the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. 
And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Here's a give to Fournette. Oh, what a move. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Green 80! On second down, here's Fournette. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just heading straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. From the gun on third down, Borders. That one complete to Yeldon. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. They'll give him eight on the play, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Eli Manning getting ready to go again on offense. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't. Not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Manning going to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Shepard. And he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Manning now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Manning now on first down. They'll get this out to Barkley complete. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Second down, here's Manning. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And they'll be facing a third and 12. That play was well covered. Just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one.
The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. Manning to throw once more. And that is incomplete. Said it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Here's Riley Dixon now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They'll start out on the ground. It's T.J. Yeldon. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Going to run the draw with Fournette. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Bortles looking to throw on third and two. Throw left side complete. It's Cole. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I will hear about that from him soon. Bortles now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Bortles now on first down. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. Bortles now 11 of 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Pass the 20. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Cole. That goes for a gain of 31. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat.
Delay of game, offense. And that'll set him back five. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Now Bortles again. Open man right side is Sharp. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. on third down not so hot two for nine to this point this time they face a third and two from the gun it's Bortles this will be caught at about the five they're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal and in a two score game obviously every play every third down like we saw there magnified big pickup it was a huge pickup what they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. Now whistles here. And I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. False start. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Here we go. Boy, they had it at the one. The false start moves it to the six now for first and goal. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Kareem Martin in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. They'll give it to him up the middle, and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he can get out of the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards it's third and very long 380, 380, 380. to throw it's Bortles and this is going to be incomplete 
before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And Lambeau will put this one through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Eli Manning and company getting set here as they head back onto the field. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's falling off. When, when a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So there's one person he can lean on. He's got to lean on that guy right now. They start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. And he powers his way past the 30. Dewan Smoot with the tackle. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks them up. And avoids the turnover. The Giants on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Manning. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for New York. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fielded at the 20. <laughs> Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And now out come the Jags. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. Green 80. Green 80. 
On first down, Portals. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Cole. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. and 10. Here's Bortles. Escaping the pressure right. Shows his strength at the 50. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him and they get upfield, get that great push and what do they create? Space. And he takes off. shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Back at the 17. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. They'll run it again with Barkley. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here? And what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. He's able to chew up 8 yards on the carry there, but still, fourth down upcoming. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier, probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. And the kick by Rosas is good. And that will make this a nine-point lead. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game. His third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, 
You get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. And the numbers show the improvement, and this is kind of what we thought we would expect to see from him. I know we overanalyze these things sometimes, but what, what switch? What's flipped that switch? Sometimes I think when you're as great as he is, you just kind of roll out each game and expect good things to happen. And that's not always the case. Those guys on the other side of the ball, they're the NFL too for a reason. So maybe at halftime, he gets a chance to regroup, kind of get it back together, get a little extra resolve, <laughs> and now he's putting it into practice. Throwing on first down is Bortles. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Set, green 80. Green set. On second down, here's Bowles. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And that'll make it third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Bortles now to throw. And he can't get away from the pressure. The Giants get there. Connor Barwin in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. It's been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here we go. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now Bortles got to have this one. Looking long for Westbrook. He's got a man complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Green 80. Green 80. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. Going up top. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Working the sideline there, good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. They'll try and run for it with Yeldon. 
A solid move on the run, but ultimately stopped short of the goal line. Down at the two. A good pick up there, seven yards, and it's going to be second and goal now. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? They'll try to punch it in with Yeldon. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. T.J. Yeldon taking it in from two yards out. And the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just hadn't been able to punch it in until that point. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And that will shave one more off this lead. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's T.J. Yeldon able to finish it off with a rushing touchdown. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. Cody Latimer now on the return. They're going to take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Well, they'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. a give to Barkley and he is met quickly in the backfield down he goes folded like a lawn chair and now following that timeout the defense back out onto the field
And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. On third down, Barkley. He'll have a first down past the 40 as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. First down carry for Barkley. And now running right through him. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they get him down right near the midfield strike. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Looking to throw it incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. But there was no trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. That's it. That's it. To throw is Manning. It's caught Shepard. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Now Manning. will be incomplete. Red Allison, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things, but once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and ten. And the Giants will kneel it here out of the victory formation. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Manning will take a knee, and that should be the final act in this one.
And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Giants are winners as we say so long from MetLife Stadium.